right, and we're live. <laughs> Welcome back to, a, I guess, another tutorial. Um, I guess with RPG Maker 2003. I can't remember the last time we picked up. It must have been before the New Year's. Also, Happy New Year's to everybody, and Merry Christmas, if I haven't already said that. Um, what I was... Oh, right, I was building a castle. And I was talking about my game, and essentially what I wanted to do is um, have them split. So I've decided to make this channel specifically just for tutorials or things that I learn along the way as I complete my game. And once I do that, I'm going to build a in-depth analysis or do a tutorial video on an in-depth analysis of each part of the uh, the game itself. So I'm, I'm very excited to cover that. Uh, but that'll be for another playlist in another time. So what bugged me was um, no one had done a... Uh, there's only been Caterpillar scripts for, a, for RPG Maker 2003. And that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do today, is create a caterpillar, a basic caterpillar in RPG Maker 2003. No one actually showed a video. Uh, again, this is very basic. I'm probably going to make a part one, two, and three. So consider this part one um, just getting the, uh, the event or the second character to follow you around the map. So let's show an example of what that looks like. Um, I still don't even know all the answers, uh, and this is by no means complete. After doing testing for, oh, at least, uh, two days, maybe about eight or nine hours, I'm sad to say that I have, I don't have the answer for, um, phasing, and if there's someone else that's even more uh, versed in the RPG Maker 2003, please post that uh, what I'm missing below because I'm very close. Uh, I just am missing the, um, the, the ability to have the uh, characters phasing. I've read about phasing. I've tried to implement phasing into the code. I just haven't been very successful. So I'm going to break down for you every little piece that I did um, through this and um, just show you what is missing and um, we'll we'll take it from there. So let's let's just uh, continue off where I am in my game and then after that I'll get to the code. All right. So here's the code now, but we'll get to it we'll get to it soon. Yes. All right, so welcome to the title page. All right. So I've just finished my, my cut scenes, which is awesome. And right now the um, character's waking up from a coma. That, that's why I wanna go over this, uh, like a call, running commentary in a separate video. Which will, or separate playlists, which will be lots of fun. Anyways, um, I'm just going to skip over this and head straight to the uh, island girl's house. And she'll be a new NPC that will be um, joining us. Oh, so there she is. And I'll just show you what happens. So, hello. So glad you got my note. Um, add her name. I'll just... Hit OK, and that's what happens. OK. Keeps talking. So I'm setting her up to follow me to the captain. OK. It's a tiny wink. OK, she's finished. OK, so there's a reason why she... Uh, ran away but if i start moving i can collect her so there we go she's now following me um moving around there's a reason for that too and if i collect her she walks around obstacles 
So this is what I mean by the implementation of phasing is that the um, the character uh, the main character won't pass through Jess who is or the island girl I, I just named her default Jess um, which is the second character instead she'll bounce off me because my character's trying to go left and as a result she'll go left she can go left with me but she'll keep going left until she runs into an object what I'm looking for is the main character to phase through her while she stands still as I'm moving. Um, I've tried this, but um, it was unsuccessful. What, what would happen is she, or the, the, the island girl character, would pass through all objects, including myself, even though the, my through wasn't on. But her through was on. I'll, I'll show this in the code in a minute. Um, and she'd essentially move towards the the other, or outside the map. So if if anyone is really versed in code, they can um, please post post this. Um, you know, it's, it was a, it was hard it was hard enough to pull off and, and follow what um, the the real the real geniuses of RPG maker uh, programming can do but um you know it's uh, it's been a while since i did anything like this anyways let's let's go dive into the code and um yeah i'll just exit out of here okay so now i'm gonna open up the code and um we'll just cover the basics of how i was able to do this so I've named my event editor Caterpillar. Uh, I have a switch that says Caterpillar position is on and that was because it was from the dialogue ending here, which would start the, uh, the process itself. I also added that Island Girl exists um, that's important uh, because it sees her now as a function. Um, the same way that when I ended the auto run sequence, I added uh, the party member. So she would show up in the, uh, the menu. And uh, that, that's basically all to get things going. Um, that's adding the names. All right, let's get back to the code. So I, I think all of this is in a sense necessary. I would double check to make sure, but I, I know for certain these two variable variables and variable IDs are important. What you're going to want to do is you're going to get the player location. Um, and what you can see what I've done here is I've stored uh, the the idea of caterpillar into an X and Y coordinate. Okay, it's going to be even harder to explain. All right, bu uh, buckle in. So this x and y coordinate comes from variables that you create on your own. So start with this. Uh, open up an extra area for variables. Um, just make sure it's clean. And add caterpillar. Then you're going, going to add below it caterpillar hero x and caterpillar, caterpillar hero y. And the reason why you'd want to add that, um, you can add it beneath the caterpillar is because the hero is moving along an x-axis grid and a y-axis grid and we have to program um, that into a stored variable and you're going to do the same for the heroine and samuel the hero so open open up your variables you can you can right click insert and um, control variable or sorry we'll get to that um uh, 
Sorry, one sec. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, you can op open up control variables, click s single, and then click this, and then from there, you can add a name and then hit OK. Sorry, yes, that is correct. So do, do that. And um, once you've done that and added those uh, couple, uh, you're going to click Get Player Location and store those two into a map ID called Caterpillar, which will also be in your variable chart once you've added it. Uh, we can find Get Player Location on the second uh, event command. I'm, I'm getting better at looking at these event commands, which is awesome. And make two. So that'll be for the hero. Always make two, and that'll be for the, the heroine. And I have them both mapped to a caterpillar. The next is now go to control variables. So what I've got here is I have the control hero at Y. So I've done the hero Y axis. And I've simply stated that that variable equals a variable ID, which you can grab again. So go ahead and do that and hit it as set and hit OK. And do the same with um, Caterpillar Hero at X. Um, and those two variable IDs are going to read what's down here. And this, this is just programming what the variable is going to do, which is, which is you. Um, so you're going to click conditional branch, which you can find, sorry, um, which you can find at the back. Click conditional branch. So I'm going to show you what I've done with those two variables that control you. <laughs> so I've clicked on the second uh, marker, and then I said the event, which is the player. Now there are other events in here, which is just, you know, the beds that I've, I've made, but there will always be the player event because um, you're always moving into new maps. So you, you can coordinate yourself onto each map in a caterpillar system. So you, you're going to want to essentially copy uh, this onto new maps. Uh, another problem that I'm also facing, which is problematic, is I can't get the event or the, the second character once you've built the the caterpillar to transition between maps. I've only been able to understand the caterpillar setup for a single map. So uh, my sincerest apologies. Uh, again, this is only a part one. Hopefully I can make a part two and part three from everyone else's coding. Oh, and a big shout out on the coding, um, uh, give credit where credit's due, is to, um, Give me, give me one second. I had, I had the script. Yeah, the script is here. Uh, I, I will post the, uh, the script uh, description in, um, in the. Uh, sorry, I, I got sidetracked in the. Um, uh, YouTube vi description below. So this was by uh, Tsukuru 2003 Caterpillar System. Yes, I did want to mention this. And I will uh, add a link to the code or just post the code below, which will be uh, which will be helpful. Um, so if, if you guys can make greater sense out of that, fantastic. Anyway, sorry, back to the uh, subject at hand. So once you've coordinated that the player is facing up, then you're going to go to the control variable or create another control variable, which is similar. And you're going to say the hero along the y-axis, because remember, we're, we're programming um, what this variable means. 
and we're going to want to add a constant of 1, which means uh, facing up, right? Plus, and then you're going to copy that and then say minus, which is subtract constant of 1. If he's facing left, this is, this is where the x comes in because it's on the x-axis grid. Um, that's why we need to have two variables and add plus one and then condition they're facing right. Notice that I have each condition very uh, specific and they're all there so up, right, down, left. Okay, now once that's finished you're going to want to absolutely make sure that the player has no phasing. Now this this code doesn't allow, um, like I said, the characters, it was just default, just but you could be named whatever you want. Um, the player doesn't have uh, phasing, but the character does. But even though I have this here, it's, uh, it's, it's incorrect code. It needs to be somehow implemented into this, this move route. However, when I was implementing it into the move route, the, uh, Jess would pass through herself, which is me, and then continue to move to uh, through everything else. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's just the beginning. So Okay, so that's, that's the first half. Sorry, I'm rambling. <laughs> um, you want to hit edit. Uh, this is the move the move route. Um, this can be found, sorry, on the second page or uh, yeah, second page and set move route. And once you've done that, um, you have your main event, which is the player, and then your other character event or whatever a sprite that you create. Um, just name it well. So I have I have here. Um, characters Jess as the event and this is this is where it gets really tricky but uh, it's it's still uh, fairly simple once you think about it so through is off which is right here Th these are your two um, that's what people mean by phasing I just haven't been able to implement it properly so through is off Jess is through character is on and now we set up another set of conditional branches which will be below and when I, I look into it um, I say when the character hero is less than the the heroine which is the second um, event which is the which is uh, which is uh, Jess, um, and she is the 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 trigger for this variable. Um, what you're going to want to do is have the uh, sprite uh, move right, and what that means is that. If the character is always behind, always behind the um, the the hero, uh, they're going to follow behind that sprite in that direction, and vice versa. So, edit if if uh, the hero is greater than the heroine on the x-axis, uh, don't do the y-axis, just do the x-axis, then you're going to, to want to move the character left. Uh, I took direction fix off. It might, the, the, the phasing might work if the direction fix is on. I, the reason why I took it off is because um, when I had it on, I, I, I figured that it was going to just completely, you know, just keep focusing in that direction, which it shouldn't. 
Um, then after after that, we're going to do the, the same thing with the y axis on a, a variable grid. So sorry, I, I, I'm going very, very, very slowly because it, it is extremely complicated and I want to make sense of it to um, the people listening, of course. So if the caterpillar hero is less than the caterpillar heroine at Y, um, I have moved down, which means if the, the sprite image is of the heroine is above the hero, then it's going to follow the hero downwards. Um, as you noticed that uh, there are there are some barriers in the way. So if I'm in front of a barrier and I push up, for example, and the character isn't directly behind me, it's going to continue to move up um, or move to the side. I haven't wrapped my head around how I can match each conditional branch to uh, essentially not do that. Uh, I've tried many, many things, but perhaps I'll make a second video once I have figured that out. Or if someone else knows and has a video that they can forward me to finish this code, that would be fantastic. Um, I'll just hit OK. And you do the same, um, just flip. So you can see that's one way, the other way, one way, the other way. And once again, if the, the hero is above the heroine, which means if she's f below the hero following him, then she's going to move up. Um, of course, any time that you apply a through, uh, I, what I've what I've tried before is adding, and you might think of this is to add a through here, move up, and then a through off. Uh, this doesn't work because she's or the the character the um, the, the the second character that's following in each of these steps is seeing themselves as a through they're going to move up and it's it won't understand between where to stop um what might need to be done i didn't even think of this is to do through and move up twice so that it knows to stop at um the, the 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 next or the next sprite above yourself and then off uh, oh boy that's maybe I have a brainwave right now I can I can certainly test that um, but I'm going to leave the uh, tutorial here uh, just uh, with the code that I have and then you can start experimenting for yourself if I figure this out I will make a part two on the RPG maker tutorial for 2003 I hope that this was uh, ex uh, as helpful as can be I I'm always terribly sorry that my, my videos are, are, are so long it's just um, you know and I'm, I'm just starting this whole uh, <laughs> YouTube tutorial uh, experience and um, yeah, uh, thanks for uh, tagging along and I'll be back with a new tutorial on uh, Caterpillar eventing systems once I've, I've figured this stuff out. Uh, for now, I'm going to sign off. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one and um, I'll hopefully be able to show you guys more things. Oh, also one last thing. This is very important after adding all this. Make sure that this is a parallel process and not anything else. 
it can't be it can't be an auto run it can't be an auto run because that would mean it would be starting up at the beginning of the event if you ever wondered why you need parallel processes this is why is because it acts as an auto run once you've used a switch which is this uh the caterpillar and um I've only been using this for about, uh, uh, I'd say, two months, but I've been really trying to learn. So, you know, anyone can learn this. Um, just take it slow. This is uh, one of those bigger, bigger things that um, people are excited about learning. And um, I got really excited once this uh, this start started to work. And yes, make sure that the priority is uh, below the characters. OK, that was a good catch. All right, so now I'll officially sign off. I hope that this was helpful and um, all the best and happy um, uh, game making. All right, signing off. Bye.